Okay. Okay, so welcome everyone again. Um, for those who didn't see me last time, I did a presentation about uh, BIM and passive design. You were having, I guess, um, uh, kind of like an exam or something like that. So uh, you didn't get to, uh, to, that, to that presentation, but it's already recorded. And I'm sure uh, Christina uh, will share the link with you. So today's presentation is gonna be about digital twins. Um, which is an extension to the previous presentation. And um, it's kind of um, the next step uh, of, of what we have uh, with BIM. Like this is the next step that we are, uh, we're looking forward to. And this is where the research is happening at the moment uh, and where the uh, technologies are, uh, are kind of converging to. So um, just a little bit of an introduction about me. Again, uh, I'm a, uh, I've just started my uh, postdoc here in UQ um, just last month, uh, and uh, I'm actually doing my uh, my research about digital twins. And we're uh, part of the project that we're doing is uh, trying to digitize uh, the campus, the whole campus, and make a digital twin to the different campus buildings and uh, try to lay out the different information that we have because we have a lot of information about a lot of different things in the, uh, in, the, uh, in the campus, such as, for example, uh, energy consumption. Uh, we have information about uh, uh, like how many users are, are in every building and stuff like that. And this is kind of like uh, data that is not actually uh, used or uh, it's not represented anywhere. So part of what we're trying to do is trying to um, make, make use of that data that we have. And so today's presentation is gonna be uh, a kind of a journey of understanding what digital BIM is, uh, uh, digital sorry, digital twins are, uh, and uh, what does it mean in the construction world. So today's presentation is uh, gonna be uh, uh, about what are digital twins and some of the things that were uh, we, like so the digital twin in the con in construction industry. And I'm gonna show you a, uh, a couple of case studies uh, of how digital BIM is uh, used and uh, what, what's it's about. Oh, I forgot to share, yeah. Oh, <laughs> sorry about that. Uh, let me just share my screen. Okay, screen two. Okay, so just for you guys who haven't seen the last slide. So this is the content that we're gonna talk about today. So going through the first uh, part of the presentation. So we already, uh, we've already evolved from having a uh, like um, in, in the architecture design, we've already evolved from uh, going through sketches and drawing, through, drawing our stuff using manual drawings and stuff like that into CAD and 2D CAD. And we, we worked with uh, Autodesk, uh, AutoCAD and, and uh, those kinds of pro programs that were uh, using 2D the uh, drawings and we um, we worked with that for a long while uh, up until we started working in 3D and the technology evolved that it can incorporate uh, or it can um, it can work with 3D elements and 3D objects and visualization of stuff. And that's where we uh, evolved into using BIM and building information modeling. Um, which is kind of uh, part of what you're doing in, in this workshop yeah, that you're, uh, uh, this is part of the BIM process. Um, um, and then what is the next step? The next step is would be um, since we're trying to make our buildings, uh, our, our building designs more and more uh, uh, like uh, represented in reality. Like when you were doing sketches, you have an idea of how the building will look like, but you don't really see the buildings there. 2D drawings and 2, 2D CAD, you had more information that you can put on your drawings. And uh, for 3D uh, or BIM, uh, you start having more and more information. So the next step is trying to replicate the physical building that you have there uh, and put that in a digital uh, in a digital format, which is the digital twins. So we're trying to make it as realistic as possible, and this will open for us more and more um, uh, like uh, benefits that we can use uh, those designs for. So, in a in a nutshell, what is digital twins? Digital twins is, are um, uh, advanced digital representations of a certain uh, asset that you have. So in our case, building. 
and uh, it's trying to model a real world object or a system. So uh, it's not just about the, um, the static object, it's more about the system that's involved with that asset that you have. And um, the most important part of that is um, uh, it, we try to connect our digital model with live data stream that is actually in the building. So now we have sensors and stuff like that that we can use in, uh, try, in having this live data stream between the digital model and the physical model. Mm -hmm. um, so what are some of the uses of digital twins? They're not only used in the built environment. Actually, they didn't start in, uh, in, in the construction industry. They started in, in actually the aerospace industry. Uh, and we have a case study about that I'm, that I'm going to show you at the end. Um, but some of the more advanced uh, usage of, uh, of digital twins actually are in uh, things like in, in the uh, fabrication and, and uh, in, in, sorry, in factories and in uh, industrial uh, in the industrial field. Um, it can be used in, um, so we said built environments uh, and we can be used in traffic systems. So on an urban scale, uh, digital twins uh, have, have their own, uh, like they can be used in traffic systems. Um, they can actually be used in uh, replicating economic markets and trying to predict the, how the economic market is. So this is part. This is kind of a digital twin to the economic market. If you have prediction models and uh, those big data that you have, and try to analyze this data and try to uh, understand the behavior, this is part of the digital uh, twin of the economic market. Health systems and even uh, in humans. And um, now we can, uh, we, we started seeing some examples of uh, like uh, digital athletes, athletes uh, and trying to replicate the behavior of those uh, uh, athletes and try and, and understand if there is uh, something that they need to improve or is there a problem that they're gonna be facing later on uh, or an injury that they're gonna be obtaining if they continue working uh, a certain way. So. Uh, like the applications of digital twin is very uh, is very wide. So how was it possible, or, or why is it? Why are we talking about that uh, about that technology at the moment? That's mainly because of the technological advancements that we uh, started uh, having and we started seeing in the past thirty or forty years. Um, uh, we started having more and more sensors installed in uh, our buildings, and we started having more advanced buildings, uh, like the engineering, advanced engineering building that we have across the road, and many other buildings uh, across the uh, across the university and across the cities uh, that we have. So we have this um, capability of uh, having this live data stream going from a physical asset to the digital asset, and vice versa. Um, so we have uh, uh, we have those technologies, and we, we also have uh, tools and softwares that help us integrate and monitor and censor this data uh, into modeling and simulation uh, of computer systems. Uh, sorry, uh, mod mod simulation computer systems. So, for example, Grasshopper and Rhino that we um, that you're working uh, that you're working with it's actually a big part or can be a big part of the digital uh, twin and trying to analyze this data and integrate the different data and, and analyze it and visualize it later on. So that's why we're talking about digital twins, uh, digital twins uh, at this uh, at this stage. So there are different types of digital twins or different levels of digital twins. Um, so there is a component level where you're only focusing about on a on a, on a specific component in, um, in, in, a, in a certain asset. It doesn't have to be the whole asset. So it can be maybe the HVAC system of, of this building. So this can be uh, uh, extracted as a as an standalone digital twin. Um, um, or some uh, like some connection between sensors and stuff like that that can be a component uh, or on, on the component level. On an asset level, it can be more about the uh, uh, about the building itself, the whole building itself, and how it, it performs uh, uh, with all the systems or all the components that are inside. Uh, on a system level, so this is a, um, a, a larger, a wider range, which is, um, for example, this campus here can be a, a system level of the digital twin, uh, of a digital twin system. And uh, on a process level, this is um, uh, actually this is more. Uh, it's, it, you can see that more in the industry, industrial 
uh, the sector and in factories and stuff like that, like how the process of manufacturing something works. And, and uh, it includes a lot of systems and a lot of assets and components within, uh, within that uh, higher level of detail. So, um, so this is generally about uh, digital twins. So talking specifically about buildings. So what makes a building have a digital twin or what make, makes a, a, a digital twin of a building? So we have the as-built physical asset that we have here, right here. Um, so the first thing we need is actually uh, the BIM or, uh, or the building information model that, of that uh, phys uh, physical building. And that's, that can be obtained through either uh, the pre uh, like the pre-construction uh, or the design phase and the design and development phase where you have a BIM model, but this is not enough. Like you have to have the as built net model. Uh, so you start integrating that with point cloud data of the actual model uh, where you can use uh, LIDAR uh, uh, technologies, which is kind of like the, uh, like this is kind of the next step of uh, radars and, and stuff like that. This is more of like you're measuring the spatial, uh, like or the space uh, using uh, light. Um, and there, we, we, we have a lot of different types of, uh, of, of scanning of the, uh, of the different, uh, like of the different geometry of the building using drones, using cameras, and even now in the, uh, mm -hmm. the new iPhones, the iPhone Pro something, or, and even the iPads, they have a LiDAR inside, uh, within one of the cameras, or actually it's, it's an, uh, a standalone uh, component in the uh, cameras that you have. So this is the first thing. The other thing, which is which is important, is the uh, geographical information system. So where does this building, where is this building located, and how does it connect with the different uh, assets uh, that that are surrounding it? So uh, if we're talking about a campus or a city level uh, digital twin, we have to have the, this kind of information integrated. And um, where are our that uh, like maybe water uh, uh, like water uh, uh, like conne connection points or where is the sewer, where is the electricity coming from and how much electricity uh, is consumed and stuff like that. This is all part of the geographical information system. So this is um, something that uh, has to be uh, included in a digital uh, twin of a, of a building. And it's all, then it's all connected. And this is where the part where it makes it a digital twin because up until this point, this is still uh, uh, this is still a BIM uh, model uh, or a BIM information model, uh, but uh, the the next step or this step here is uh, including uh, or or connecting it with sensors and uh, the Internet of Things, uh, which is the uh, the devices that are connected to uh, a certain network and. You, and we already have this in our homes, like the smart homes, like you have a smart bulb, you have a uh, washing machine that tells you when your uh, laundry is ready to be picked up and stuff like that. So uh, this is where uh, the digital twin uh, technology, uh, or this is a point, key point in the digital twin technology. Uh, so having uh, uh, sensors and having internet of things as long as, as well as having uh, historical data. So. If you have historical data of, uh, uh, or like a lot of data that are have been collected for for the past ten years of the operation of the building, this is important to include in a digital twin, where you can later on visualize as historical uh, data, or you can do some prediction analysis, uh, or predictions and analysis and simulations using the, the, those kinds of data to enhance your building performance uh, while operation. So all of this um, uh, creates, uh, or this is the foundations of a digital twin. And um, this is kind of like the process of the digital twin. So the input was the physical asset that we have, and then uh, the process itself, where those are the components of the process. And of course, the output, uh, which is the main or the important part or the crucial part of, the, uh, of having a digital twin, and this is where we have the benefit, is the, um, um, we can visualize the, the digital twin, and we, have, uh, we can visualize it using VR, we can visualize it uh, on, 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 screen, on touch screens and stuff like that. 
and uh, we can start performing analysis and predictions. I will, I've, I've already said that a, lot, a couple of times uh, before, before. So this is another, like, I'm, I'm gonna show you a couple of diagrams that are kind of like saying the same idea that we're just uh, discussing the last slide. So uh, uh, again, it can be uh, like, uh, you can uh, change the, uh, like, uh, what do you call it? The, uh, the definitions of what should be included in the digital BIM or and what is what's not and how, how you categorize it. So from an engineering perspective, you have to have the BIM model, you have to have uh, the, the specifications, the geotechnical data. From an operations perspective, uh, you have to have the uh, Internet of Things, sensors, drones, cameras, point clouds, and stuff like that. And from an information perspective, you, sh you should have like uh, work orders, maintenance of uh, maintenance records, inspection records, things like that can help you with, uh, with having your digital twin. And the output again is uh, 3D and uh, and VR and uh, and 4D, which is the timeline change. And you can see historical data and predict prediction prediction data and analysis analysis and analytics uh, for later on. Okay, and again, this is uh, um, another, uh, like, it's kind of like a comparison, not a comparison, it's kind of like uh, draws a line, this diagram draws a line more in, of where the BIM is and when you start defining a digital twin. So um, you can see that uh, the BIM is usually, or the building information modeling is where uh, happens in the conceptual and design and construction phase. Whereas you, if you want to use that BIM model in the operation and maintenance phase and the end of life phase of the buildings, then uh, this, um, this has to evolve into a digital twin uh, to be used efficiently. So you have, having only a BIM that is not connected or disconnected from uh, the physical model does not, uh, the, the, uh, is not the most effective way of managing the building. So you have to have uh, a connectivity or a, a way of connection with the uh, physical model like the digital and physical models. Okay, so this is kind of a definition of the digital twin for uh, for buildings. And so um, for different projects and for different uh, users actually of the building, they would have different definition of, uh, of, of, their, of how they want to use their digital twin uh, or the digital twin model. So, the basic things that you should have is a 3D model, the GIS data, uh, the GIS and the data or information that is going back and forth between the digital and the physical model. But what's more important is you have to ask yourself who is your audience and who are, who are, who are, who are the people who are going to use this digital twin and what kind of data do you have? So is the data that you have actually uh, communicating with that audience or not? Uh, and um, and one, one of the things that are actually uh, considered an obstacle in uh, implementing digital twin on a city level um, and uh, is the legalities and the actually the, uh, um, like the, uh, how the data is, um, what's the word of that? Uh, like public and private data and uh, um, um, what creative, uh, What's the Creative Commons and like I'm trying, hmm? not concept. I'm trying to find uh, copyrights. Copyrights, yeah. I was trying to find it for this word. So yeah, copyright of data, uh, of the data that you have. So is this data available to the public or not? Or do, should we make it available to the public? And, and what are the implications of that, uh, of making it uh, available to the public, for example? And if there is private data, then does it have to be purchased? Or this private data is actually, like by default, has to be public data. So this is part of, the, um, of, of what's hindering the construction industry and in applying digital twins. and having this um, um, like um, like we already have the technology and you have the technology and the people to make that happen but we, we don't see that happening uh, very easily and actually this is part of what I'm trying to tackle in uh, where we're trying to tackle in that in in my post in my postdoc so we're going to see how this goes um, then um, so yeah we have to define what what's the what who are our audience and what are the problems that we want to uh, to solve with that digital twin? Okay, 
Um, so some of the examples, they have some prob problems in the heating performance of the building, for example, or the energy building usage or uh, and stuff like that. Uh, so uh, we have to have a, a, a way to co collect that data and visualize it and analyze it. Uh, um, another example on the city level is the transportation. So if you're um, like how, 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 how people are transporting from uh, like commuting uh, in, in different times of the day and how can we solve that? And if we build a new road, will that actually solve the problem or not? If we, uh, ha if we add uh, um, maybe a car park space, will that solve some of the problems that we have in transportation and, uh, and car parks in the city, for example, or not? So um, you like, Trying those, um, trying those scenarios before you go into the physical world, like trying them digitally before you go into the physical world will save a lot of time, save a lot of money and effort uh, uh, um, when you use digital twin, of course. Okay. So uh, for a digital, like there's this concept where it's, it's called the digital twin maturity level. So this is kind of like, um, like you, like you can call, like you can start calling a digital twin uh, or a, a building model that you have as a digital twin from if you have it connected to even just one sensor. Like this is this can be a, a digital twin. For example, if you have it connected only with the electricity consumption, then yeah, you have a digital twin of the building model that you have for the electricity consumption, and that that's great. But we have different level of materials, and and we we have to understand those different levels to understand what is the. Um, what is what we are what kind of technologies that we can use uh, and who is it going to be useful for um so just quickly uh, I, again this presentation can will be available and you can look at that uh, that graph in, in in details um so the different levels that we are looking at is the functionality level so um in in terms of um, like the so first level will be the descriptive level or is it is this model descriptive is does it actually uh, show what what it is uh, like you want to know how many rooms is this building. So does this model or this digit, does this model show you or the digital twin shows you the number of rooms that we have um, or maybe the number of uh, chairs that you have in a certain room. This can be part of the description of the building. If that changes, then is this gonna, uh, is, is this gonna be affected in real time like asset information storage and management for, uh, so this is the first level, like just the description. The second level is having uh, your data analyzed. So uh, you start having some an analytics. Uh, for example, if uh, your energy consumption, like you know the energy consumption, but if you want to go in the further step is uh, if you want to know this energy consumption of your building is higher than the average of the other buildings that are surrounding you or not. So this is when we started having an informative digital twin. The second level, the third level will be um, implementing data science and machine learning. And this is where uh, it is a predictive model uh, or a, a predictive digital twin. And this will help you in the later stage, a fourth stage uh, in, in having some prescription of this model. Like uh, maybe you want to solve the energy problem. So uh, are we gonna decrease or increase the temperature of the HVAC system? Uh, like the thermostat a little bit, will that solve the problem or not? So we start having some, sorry, some prescriptions. And uh, the fifth and the last step is a transform transformative uh, uh, point, which is actually you're kind of like removing your hands from your uh, from the operation of the building and having the digital twin itself operating the building. So it can run the simulation, it can run the optimization and, and take a decision and actually implement that decision. So for example, closing the shades, automa like automatically closing the shades of the building to improve the uh, energy performance of the building. That can be uh, a, a way of a trans transformative digital twin uh, uh, in, in, in that example that we have here. Okay. Okay, so coming to the uh, more technical part of it, I'm not going to go into details to be honest with you. I'm just like the like I'm just giving you some indicators if you want to go and learn more. Uh, I'll I'll leave you a link uh, of a, a very interesting course. It's a free course actually about BIM and the digital twins. Um, I forgot to put put in the presentation, but I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna share it with you. So some of the tools that we use in digital twins. 
Um, of course, the tools that we've already used in the, in, in the building information modeling. So we have Revit, Ninjasworks, Rhino, and Grasshopper. Um, sorry. Um, but there are extra tools that will help uh, transform your building from a build model to a digital twin. So Matterport, for example, is um, it's it's not a software; it's more of a, a platform and uh, a, and a specific set of devices that can uh, generate point cloud data of a, of a building. They actually use it uh, here in Australia. Um, uh, well, like in, in real estate, like if you have an apartment and you um, sometimes you have this uh, in if you go to realestate.com.eu, for example, um, and you want to see an apartment, you, you can see the plan. And now you can even see the 3D of this plan, like the actual 3D of this plan. So Matterport is one of those uh, companies that actually do point cloud data and stuff like that. Um, uh, so uh, for GIS, uh, geographical information systems, we have ArcGIS and, um, and MetroMap. MetroMap is uh, actually an Australian-based company that uh, uh, they kind of like scan the cities uh, and scan the buildings of the cities using uh, planes and using drones and stuff like that. And they use the LiDAR uh, technology to, to, to scan the 3D models. You know where when you go into Google uh, Earth and you and you can you can rotate around a certain building and you can see the different parts of the building. This happens through technologies just like that. So this is kind of like a step uh, that can help you go into uh, digital twins. And there are uh, currently and recently actually some uh, digital twin technology platforms that are specific for building uh, the building industry because you can find a lot of digital twin uh, platforms for for other industries for and especially for the manufacturing and process, processing industry but for digital twi for building uh, digital twins there are a few that are emerging at the moment so Autodesk Tandem, they have their own uh, digital twin uh, platform and Bentley iTwin Ventures is another one and last but not least, the visualization and VR, which which where everything and like this is where everything goes uh, to, and this is where the end user uh, experiences a digital twin. So we have Unity, Unreal, and um, Escape, and another and a lot of more uh, of um, another, like a lot of other software. But um, it, it's very interesting that the gaming industry is, is actually a very big part of that uh, of, of the digital twin, and, and it's actually starting to kind of like, they're kind of like um, emerging or uh, converging together, uh, like you cannot, like both the gaming and the architecture and the construction industry are actually being um, a, a big uh, industry itself uh, on its own. Okay, um, so for the interest of the workshop that you're working on, um, um, you can actually start uh, like um, taking data from a certain from a building and putting that in Grasshopper and the Rhino and um, using a plugin which is uh, I guess was called Unit um, Unity Reflect. So Unity Reflect is a plugin that actually uh, takes your model uh, or takes whatever you have in Grasshopper and visualize that into Unity at the end. Um, I haven't tested that to be honest with you, but I'm I'm, uh, I'm uh, it's part of where I'm, going, where I'm going to start testing that so those stuff, especially in my boost doc. So uh, hopefully those things will work. Um, so yeah, so you can you can kind of like experiment, ex explore those things uh, later on if you want to know more. Um, so just a like a few a few benefits of the digital uh, digital twins, and we already talked about that. So improving decision making, uh, understanding the built environment and causes and effects. Minimizing risk, this is very important, and uh, fast and intelligent data query and, and understanding different data what you're building. And this is where the case studies come. And um, the first case study is actually a very interesting one. It's not about a building. So um, since uh, so we've we've been talking about the digital twins that there are new technologies, emerging technologies that's happening just a few uh, like in the few decades and stuff. But actually, the first digital twin was actually in 1970. So the, if you have, uh, I, I guess all of you have heard about the Apollo 13 mission. So the Apollo 13 mission was actually, uh, was not a successful one in terms of going to the moon, but it was a successful one in actually 
getting back the uh, astronauts safe to Earth. Because what happened is uh, it was a catastrophe that happened on the uh, on the main main shuttle or main space spacecraft. So one of the engine tank, uh, the oxygen tanks uh, exploded, and this has caused a severe damage to the hull of the uh, of the uh, shuttle itself. And uh, it was not safe actually, like you like the, using like the preliminary analysis, it was not safe returning that shuttle back to Earth in that uh, in that state. And um, what happened is, um, um, or actually they were they were very lucky that they already had uh, um, uh, simulators for the uh, for the command module and the uh, and the uh, like the main spacecraft. So the command module is one that's at the, at the, at the back, which is which is the which is that one here. That's the command module. So if you had a simulator that looks like it, I'm sorry, the image wasn't. I uh, cropped it. Uh, I had to. Uh, I'll, I'll show it to you later on. But it it's, it kind of resembles of that command module of the real command module. But it has. Uh, but what is actually real was the uh, cockpit itself, the mission control consoles that they have. But every other things that in that command module was uh, make believe, which is kind of like simulated using computers and uh, a lot of formulas and stuff like that. So this was one of the first digital twins and they used that in, um, so they used that model in, um, in, in, in replicating the accident and started doing simulations and analysis and optimization on how can we return that, uh, that command module back to Earth uh, safely. So um, they survived the so thank God that they survived the disaster. And um, what makes the this model that they used and they uh, and, and and how they uh, how they uh, um, like how they deal, dealt with the problem and how they optimize the um, the way of returning to Earth uh, safely is that this the digital twin was uh, first it was a physical digital twin so. Um, uh, it was it, part of it was digital and part of it was, was physical, but um, and this uh, helped in analyzing the uh, physical asset and trying to understand uh, uh, like if we if we do X then Y would happen without any human intervention at this point like it, they were like the astronauts were safe where they're trying back at Earth the different things as the model was connected. So the second thing the model was connected. And uh, so digital twins require constant feedback of data from the physical asset that you can use to update the condition. So they can uh, uh, connect. They already ha have connection between the, the, the simulation model that's on Earth and the uh, module that's uh, up there in the space. Um, and the other things, it's adaptable. So they could actually change uh, the different elements in the simulation module and uh, replicate what happened up there. Um, yeah, and, and and it's responsive. So this is uh, this is what makes this uh, case here as a digital twin. Uh, and those are the same things that we uh, we try to uh, enforce in the digital twin nowadays. So the other uh, the other um, case study that I wanted to show you is actually a, a city scale. Uh, a digital twin, and this is the last thing in our presentation today. So this is a video. Uh, uh, it's a six minute minutes video. I still, I think, I still have time, so I can show you that one. And uh, this will be the end of our presentation after that video. So just give me a sec to work on the video. I hope the voice is working. So uh, I'm just gonna. Oh, sorry. Oh, there it is. Okay. Sorry, guys. has created virtual I'm sorry. Uh, give me a sec. <laughs> I forgot that I should get that here. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. 
China's largest city, covering almost 4,000 square kilometers and not, not using any satellites, drones, and sensors. In Accuracy. Powered by Unreal Engine's photorealistic graphics, covering thousands of buildings and with the potential to impact millions of people, this is how China flows Shanghai. The extreme rise of technology over recent decades is now having a major impact on cities. Faced with several challenges, from the huge growth of urban populations to climate change and pandemics, these centres are now using connected digital information to improve services, plan development, and optimize buildings. But digital twins take things to a different level. Our precise virtual representations of physical assets continuously up to date and could cover anything from a small element of a building to an entire city. And that's what Beijing-based developer 51 World is planning to do with Shanghai. Powered by a city that covers an area of square kilometers. Shanghai Tower were created in other buildings, roads, waterways, and green spaces were then made using a pathway that's data from a geographic information system into 3D information. 51 World's intention is to turn this model into a digital twin, a virtual city that is continuously updated in near real time. Satellites, drones, and other sources. It could now its user to control systems, monitor traffic, or show citizens how a planned new project might appear. Designers can simulate ideas in the live city environment before they are designed, and the impact of decisions from where to position bus stop to how large a new housing development should be can be understood in advance. Models of other cities are already being used to create digital twins. Perhaps its best example yet is in Singapore, where one has been built <coughs> integrating information on buildings, transport, and to simulate floods. Digimon World has also implemented several intelligent transportation projects across China, offering solutions for 3D real-time monitoring and migrating simulation. To optimize the efficiency of real-time rendering in Shanghai as a user moves across the cityscape, the entire simulation is divided up into two square kilometer segments. Closer objects appear in fine detail, showing accurate environmental reflections, soft shadows on surfaces, and lifelike shading in accordance with the weather. To achieve these graphics, 51 World turned to Unreal Engine, one of the industry's leading platforms for creating photorealistic visuals and immersive experiences. As cutting-edge rendering capabilities, Unreal Engine gave 51 World a real-time lighting system that simulates the sun, photorealistic models of the city's landmarks, and the ability to quickly find errors. Instantly raises questions about rights, ethics, and ownership. All of the data used in systems like this is anonymized, and facts about specific individuals and their movements are not tracked. It's more than looking at broader, trend level information. Understanding that, the exciting advantages these digital twins bring come entwined with challenging questions for our societies. It's undoubtedly one of the most involved we've seen. Several other cities are now exploring the idea of virtual homes, albeit by creating advanced 3D models rather than true digital twins. In Finland, VR studio Zoan used Unreal Engine to create virtual Helsinki, a digital replica of the capital that's used for everything from 360 degree virtual real estate tours to promoting the city to international exhibitions. In New Zealand, Build Media and the city's council used Unreal Engine to develop an app 
They now plan to integrate my data to create a true digital twin. SimCity, your Minecraft fan, will tell you that building city simulations with a gaming engine has been possible for decades. This technology is now on course to transform our real world. What's more, digital twins are still in their infancy, and their potential is enormous. With future models expected to be capable of autonomous decision making, it seems that the age of the truly smart city has only just begun. I was brought to life with Unreal Engine. To see what else is possible with one of the world's most powerful visualization tools, click the link below. As always, if you enjoyed this video and would like to get more from the definitive video channel for construction, subscribe to the Beaver Network. So, yeah, that's it. Uh, so, it's exciting. We're living in an exciting world at the moment. Um, actually, Brisbane is trying, is, is, is heading for a digital twin, especially after the winning of the Olympics, uh, that's uh, 2032. So, uh, yeah, so we're going to see a lot of that uh, happening. And if you really want, if you want to see something hands on at the moment uh, regarding digital twins, you can head to the Cross River Rail experience in the city. Um, it's in 151 Edward Street. Uh, I guess it's open from 10 a.m. till I guess 3 or 4 p.m. every day. Uh, you can check more uh, online about that. But uh, they have a lot, like they have some VR headsets and uh, showing you the how the Cross River Rail will look like after it finishes. And there is an uh, like an immersive uh, experience room, like a three, it's not actually 160, but 270 room where it shows you some uh, visualizations of the city and of the uh, Cross River Rail project and how it's developed and so on. So yeah, so yeah, that's, that's basically what I wanted to share with you today. And uh, hopefully you've learned something new today. And thank you so much for it. So if you have any questions, uh, or, uh, like any concerns, anything uh, you can ask. So good.